Hi, I'm Kelly and today we're going to be doing a functional reformer class for beginners. So what does functional mean? This is really so that we can develop better gait patterns, better walking ability. So we need to work really one-sided at a time. In a lot of the classic repertoire, we're doing two-legged work. So we're going to focus on some single leg work. We're also going to focus on the functional movements we need for daily life squatting, pushing, pulling, bending, rotating, lunging. So we're gonna bring some of those elements into the workout today. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna start with our foot bar all the way up. And on this reformer today, I'm gonna to be starting with a red and a yellow, which is a one and a quarter springs. But you can work anywhere from uh, one to two springs. So a medium tension for you. You want the ease of being able to push the carriage back and forth without straining the shoulders. So we're gonna start standing. We're gonna put our hands on the bar, stand ourselves midway on the carriage. Of course, if you're a little bit tighter in your hamstrings, you might wanna move your legs backwards. And if you're more flexible, you can move your feet forward. But I'm gonna start in the middle. And we're just gonna start with a little cat-cow, a little wake up of the spine. So just take a moment to settle your pelvis back over your feet. Check in your wrists. I want to see that you're nice and open through the wrist joint. So we're not flexing and putting pressure there. My hands are in front of my shoulders. And we're just gonna take a nice deep breath in and just start to move into our cat stretch, our rounded back position. I want you to draw up the navel, draw back the ribs and feel the shoulders opening. A nice inhale there. On your exhale, you're gonna soften your knees and ripple your spine into more of a neutral or a slight extended position. And go again. Nice inhale, sending the tail down, the pubic bone up, the navel drawing into the spine and feel the space opening up the back body. And then as you exhale, open this up. If you wanna do it slightly slower and take it into four breaths, it's absolutely fine. Let's go two more. So inhaling as we draw up. This might be a little bit more unusual to do an inhale on the cat stretch, but I really like to focus on the space and the lengthening on the inhalation, on the exhalation. So let's go one more time. And extend. Feel those shoulders coming onto your back, feeling a little bit more neutral there. And then we're gonna stay in the round back into the cat stretch. We're gonna to begin to push the carriage back. And I want you to inhale as you draw the carriage back through the back of your legs, coming into hip extension. So feeling like the legs are pushing back the carriage, but you're maintaining your curve. No stress in the upper body. Let's do three more. Total of five. And just notice the arches of your feet. Can you keep them gently lifted as you go back? Notice the angle of your knees. Are they pointing directly forward? And then let's transition into our straight back position. So the shoulders arrive on our back. We're a little bit more connected to our lats. My knees are bent just to maintain a neutral spine. Let's inhale as we go back and let's focus on the exhale, drawing slowly the, the legs underneath you. Inhale as you push back with the back of the legs, sending the heels towards your shoulder rests and feeling space in your hips as you come back in. Let's do two more, keeping softness through the shoulders and a connection to your back. I think I did an extra one. And in, lovely. Now we're gonna transition down onto the knees. So we're gonna come down onto one knee and we're gonna put the other foot onto the platform. If you've got a platform extender, you can use that as well. And we're just gonna take a little moment to settle our hips and feel that the hips are level in space when we do this exercise. So sometimes the leg in front can cause the hip to rise up. So we're just gonna find a comfortable position, even if that leg is slightly more um, out to the side. So we're gonna place our hands on the bar and we're gonna to start to push back the back leg into hip extension. So you might feel a little stretch down the front of your hip. Then you're gonna push away from your platform, straightening your front knee. I want you to maintain a connection to that back leg so that we're not sinking down. And as you pull the carriage in, let's lift the chest up. Find a little bit more length through your spine. So let's go again, so it's a light fingertip touch, I'm pushing through the heel, 
extending the hip and then straightening the front leg. So we're getting a bit of hip flexors and hamstrings to start us off. Now let's challenge it a little bit by taking those arms up. If you can, we're gonna push back that back leg. Now we have a little bit more proprioception, a little bit more balance challenge. So this is preparing us for some standing work. Take your time. You breathe in a way that suits you. So if you wanna exhale as you push back and inhale to return, that's great. If you feel more of the support is needed to pull yourself back in, exhale there. Let's do one more. See how this feels so we can compare it to the other side. And then lower your hands, bring the carriage right back into the stopper, and then let's change legs. So taking this foot position so that you really feel that you can drive your heel back. Okay, so that we really get a lengthening through the calves. Let's have another little check of our pelvis. Can we feel a little bit of lift through the front of the pelvis and a lengthening through the back of the pelvis? Let's have our fingertips on the bar to start. Let's go two of these, pushing back the back leg into your hip extension. Straightening the front leg as much as you feel you can. You don't need to lock it out. It's just a little bit of a push away. So I wanna feel like my heel is going away from my bottom. Good, if that feels good for you, lift up. Let's try and balance. You don't have to, do this when you're ready. Notice how my back leg stays very stable in that hip extension. So it's more about the front leg pushing away and controlling me back in. Let's go two more if we can. Keep the lift through the center of you. Last one. And then release your arms and bring the carriage back in. Right, so we're gonna come off the reformer. We're gonna change our springs ready for footwork and we're gonna focus on single leg footwork. So we're gonna go slightly lighter than our normal footwork. So on this reformer, I'm actually gonna do two reds. You could do a two red and a yellow or two red and a blue. So anywhere between two and three but we wanna be able to go seamlessly from the single leg work. So I'm gonna sit myself down, roll myself onto my back and make sure your head blocks are what you need for you. Have a little moment to just check in how you're feeling and just allow the pelvis to roll itself down, feel your shoulder distance across and then making sure you're nicely in the middle. We're gonna put the balls of the feet on the reformer, hip distance apart, and we're just gonna do a few doubles just to warm us up. So we're gonna take a breath out, and this might seem a little bit light, but we're just gonna prepare the pelvis and really feel that the sacrum is able to melt into the carriage. And then we're gonna feel the back of the knees lift up to pull us back in. <sighs> Exhale out nice and smooth so with this lighter spring we can feel the quality of space in the hips the knees the ankles and all the way up the spine so i'm using these few warm-up ones to feel the softness through my joints and feel that i'm able to melt the weight of the sacrum into the mat so we're in a neutral position here and I'm going to keep the carriage there and just be aware of the back of the legs and be aware of my big toes on the bar. We're going to try and stabilize ourselves and peel one leg to tabletop. So this is going to really connect us into our hip extensors of the supporting leg. We're going to find the bar, have a moment in the middle and then change sides. So be very aware of your foot position on the bar feeling you're staying in plantar flexion and then peeling from one side to the other. I want you to notice your pelvis here. Are you able to transition without moving side to side? Let's do one more on each side. We're gonna go back to that first side and this is where we're gonna start our single leg footwork. I want you to lift the knee of the supporting side 
and extend the leg out. Really finding that place that we just found in our marching so that we feel the hip extensors and we feel space in the knees. So we don't want to lock out the knees, but we do want to straighten the leg as if you're standing up. I want you to imagine you're standing on that bar. Let's do one more. Then we're going to start to go into our reciprocal motion, our bicycle. So as the supporting leg extends, we bend and then we switch as we come in. Take this nice and slow. Be aware of your pelvis. Is it staying in the middle as you move? Feel the leg that's floating out is coming from your center. Let's go two more. Reach. One more. Reach. Now we're going to come back up to our double leg position. We're going to have a moment to really connect and stabilize. And then we're going to peel the other leg up, ready for the other side. So we have our single leg staying in tabletop. This is really just to check in that the pelvis is staying level. Your breath is flowing through your movement and the supporting leg is extending in a really efficient way. How's your heel? Is it staying up? Are you working into the arch of the foot? Let's add our bicycle. And you can do whatever breath serves you. Some of you will like to exhale as you push out. Some of you will like to inhale. Notice which way allows you to keep your sacrum heavy on the floor. On the mat, I should say. Let's do one final one. And then return that foot back to the bar before we come back in nice and slowly. Now, we're going to wiggle ourselves down. I'm going to drape our legs over the bar. Now you might find that your bottom is slightly hanging over. If you need your bar a little bit higher, that's fine. And we're going to do a little bridge version here. So this is to really focus on our hips extending. So what we're going to do is bring the heels gently to around to each other so there's a slight rotation in the hips. I want you to very gently roll the pelvis, but focus on the hips opening at the front. So I'm going to send my legs over the bar. And when you get to that hip extension, we're going to notice how the sacrum feels. Can it lengthen away from your head? Do you feel long? Are you able to drape the feet down and really feel the bridge without our feet? What do the hips feel like? And can we lengthen all the way down? feeling like your sacrum is going further away from your head. And let's go again. There's a gentle tilt towards your imprinted position, your pubic bone to navel, your 12 o'clock, whatever position allows you to be in a posterior tilt slightly. Have a moment there. Feel the space in your hips. Feel the space around the knees and softly allowing the front of you to melt down. Really feeling that liquid quality. Now I want you to do that one more time and I want you to feel this position and hold it in your mind because we're gonna do this with the feet on the bar. So I want you to feel what this feels like through your legs, what this feels like through your low back, staying long, and a final descent, nice and beautiful down. So we're gonna bring our feet now up to the bar. We're having a little shimmy back up to where we were. Make sure your head blocks are down for this one. And we're gonna go into our bridge, our roll up. So from here, we're gonna melt into the feet. We're gonna send our legs up with a slight tilt of the pelvis. And we're gonna imagine our bar underneath our knees that we've just done. Lengthen through your sacrum and then softly roll back down. So our challenge is to keep the carriage still as we roll through this. Melting into the feet, exhaling up. 
Finding space in your hips, feel the feet pushing down, the legs going forward, your spine long. Rolling back down. Now this time we're gonna stay in our bridge and we're just gonna practice balancing on one leg. We're gonna go into a little march. Feel your hands on the floor, feel your feet are in a good position and we're gonna peel up one leg to tabletop this is gonna be really challenging. Stay with it. And down. And then lower yourself all the way down. So we'll do that one more time. This is a nice prep for when we start to do our single leg presses. Where we're just gonna march and balance. And feel when the leg goes up that the knee is lifting as your foot presses into the bar. Let's try and do one more on each side. Press the foot down in the bar, lift the knee up. See if you can keep your bottom at the same height. And then roll back down nicely to the carriage. This time we're gonna do a press. So as we roll up and we find our bridge, we're gonna press through the feet and lower our bottom down so we're in a straight line, pressing through those heels. And then we're gonna pull the carriage in to find our bridge. Imagine that bar underneath your knees. We're gonna press away and keep a length. So this is gonna be a lot of work on our hamstrings and our glutes and our core support. Let's go two more if we can. And lifting up. Exhale, one more time. Keep the length through the back of your neck and lifting up. And once you're at your stopper, you're gonna roll all the way down, letting the pelvis settle. And take a few moments just to release. Let's bring our legs into our chest and just have a little melting here. Well done on that exercise. We're gonna to move to our hands into the straps. So we're gonna take our handles and if you've got the short straps, then you're gonna put your hands through there and just feel for yourself that this is an appropriate tension for you. I've kept the same tension that I had with my legs, but you may wanna go down a little bit if it's a little bit too strong. What I want you to do is to meet the tension and imagine your legs coming into tabletop. So I just want you to breathe in your mind and feel like the legs are floating to tabletop. Then release the tension gently. So meet the tension with nice long straight arms and imagine you're gonna float your legs to tabletop. So this gets the pelvis ready to support your legs. On the next one, we're gonna make it a reality. We're gonna meet the tension you're gonna imagine your legs coming to tabletop and then one is gonna come there with that feeling, the other is gonna meet it. So we're stable through the arms, through the pelvis. Notice my legs are coming in a little bit from tabletop so I feel very supported here. We're gonna exhale the arms down and feel like your legs come a little bit towards you to stabilize you. The arms are hovered. And then can we control the arms back up and can we potentially tap the legs to the bar? If that's too much, just keep them in tabletop. And then I'm gonna float my legs up as the arms come down. So this is really challenging our pelvis stability and our hip flexors, the control. So I wanna lower the legs without arching my back. Exhale to reach the arms down and bring the legs in. Now, I'm gonna keep my legs here and let the arms go up. Only as far as I can maintain stability. Exhale down. Let's go two more of these. Really feel like you're pulling from the top of the arm, not the hands. And the arms are arcing on the side of you. Okay, let's add our unilateral work. So as we arc the arms, I want you to do your single leg stretch. Inhale to come back up. Exhale, single leg stretch on the other side. 
Now I don't want your other leg to be dormant. I want the other leg to be flexing towards you. So we have hip extension, hip flexion, one leg towards you, one away. If you're experiencing any clunking in your hips, I want you to lower the lever down. So it's more of a femur arc. So we're still getting hip flexion, hip extension, but no clunking. One more on each side if you can. Nice challenge for our arms. Nice challenge for our core. Last one. And then slowly bring yourself back to the stopper and return your legs back down. Lovely, so we're gonna come out of this position. We're gonna roll onto our side so that we can sit up and come into our kneeling postures. So we're gonna change the springs to one red. Feel free to go lighter than that if you need to, but one red gives you some stability. We're gonna come onto our knees, facing our ropes, and we're gonna hold onto our ropes a little bit further down so that we have some stability when our hips are flexed. We're actually gonna be starting in a slight hinge position. Now this is getting us prepared for doing things like deadlift and hinge patterns. So I want you to be very careful with this pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice breath in, we're gonna connect through our abdominals, and we're gonna push down through the shins, rise up into our straight kneeling position as the arms come by our side. I want you to feel the upper arms are really pulling back, and you only need to go to the side of your body is fine. You're gonna control slowly our hips back into that flexion as the arms come forward. So this is a big challenge for stability and a slight variation on our chest expansion. So instead of coming right from the kneeling, we come from a hinge. So we have to stabilize to get us into this position. Don't be afraid to let the shoulder blades rise up so that the arms can rotate in this position. And then slowly hinging. Now as you hinge, feel the movement is coming at the hips, keeping a neutral spine. So I'm taking it really slow and steady pressing the legs down into the carriage, lifting the rest of the body up. Feel the lats, feel the back of your arms, and feel the stretch across the front of your chest. Try and soften your grip through the ropes. Let's do this two more times. Chest expands, inner thighs, lots of space. Slowly back, be in control. This is our last one. All the way up, nice exhale. Now from here, can you take the arms back a little bit further? Can you feel more retraction without losing your stability? So we found our neutral position. Now we're gonna move the arms, bringing them back, lifting the breastbone. One more time, feel your stability, Feel space all the way up your body and release. Now we're going to take it into a slight variation for the arms. So we go back into our hinge. This time as we pull, we're going to come into a bent elbow position. This is going to prepare us for more advanced versions when we add rotational work. So our elbows are bent, but the upper arm is still pulling back. So I want to make sure that the elbows don't go past the body. So we stay really vertical down with the arms. So this is working into the retractors of the shoulder blades and getting us very stable to be able to progress from. Let's do one more. Hold it there, feel that position. And then slowly let your arms come forward. And we're going to lower those straps back down and we're gonna turn around the other way for our front rowing. So I'd like you to take a moment to find the bar, and I'm gonna put my feet through the middle of my shoulder rests. Now, if you're not comfortable sitting right down, you can put an overball between here, but I like to just have my sitting bones near the shoulder rests. Then I can grab my straps and feel very secure. I'm just gonna check 
where I want my hands to be so that when the arms are by the side, you have a little bit of tension. So if you don't have tension, then go into the short ropes. So I'm feeling quite secure here. So we're gonna slowly press into the shins and rise up with the arms bent and continue to push forward. So again, we've got this squatting pattern happening. I'm gonna slowly sit the pelvis back. If you find that too challenging, don't go down so far. And then as I press through the shins, rising up into that hip extension, the arms are gonna go forward. So if you don't wanna go down and up, just stay here, bending the elbows and extending the arms, shoulder flexion. I want you to feel though as if you've come up and down, pressing down into the shins, down into the legs, up through the body. So you're in a nice neutral position. I'll do one more with the squatting pattern. You choose what works for you up. Now from here, we're going to lower the arms down low by our sides. So this is our front rowing traditional, scooping the arms up to shoulder height, but feeling that support through the body that you've just felt. Feel like your arms come from your back. Feel there's a connection to your pelvis arcing the arms from the back of the pelvis up. Let's do one more of these. That should be enough. And all the way back. Now to lower your straps down, you're gonna sit back towards your heels, carefully place those back. And here we are, finishing that exercise. Our next exercise is our knee stretches. So I'm just gonna add a little half spring to this. So I've got a red and a blue, and you can go anywhere between a red and uh, two reds, so a medium tension. So we're gonna come into a neutral spine with the hands slightly in front of the shoulders. Again, we're gonna look at our wrists like we did in the warm up. So we're nice and neutral there. And we're gonna sit our pelvis back towards the feet. I want you to notice your feet and making sure that we're getting as much bend into the toes as we can. So my sitting bones are angling down towards my feet. My spine is neutral. And we're gonna to start to push the carriage out as far as we can keep the spine in that same position. So I want you to feel the relationship between your pelvis and your legs so that the pelvis remains stable as the legs go back. Now we're gonna start nice and slow at first, making sure that we're nice and stable across the shoulders. So shoulder blades are nicely on your back in neutral. And I'm pushing a little bit with the heel of my hand. The emphasis is here in the hip flexion and hip extension. Now let's see if we can increase the pace. So we pull the carriage in, control, pull. So I really want you to feel that hip flexion as you draw the carriage in. It's almost like your pelvis is sitting backwards as the legs come in. Let's go three more. Keeping those arms stable, two, and no one. Settle that carriage in. And then we're gonna step off into our scooter. So if we come onto the side of the carriage, I'm gonna take the springs down to one spring. So I'm gonna take that half spring off. And because my carriage is slightly higher and I'm a little bit shorter, I'm gonna be standing on the platform extender. If you've got a little box or a little head block that you can put yourself on. But what you wanna feel is when you're standing, that your leg, when it pushes back into the carriage and your knee is lifted, that you are level with your pelvis, okay? So we don't wanna be hitched in the hips. So we're gonna be starting and just balancing ourselves here, feeling the supporting leg sending itself down into the floor. This is our first standing exercise, so I just want you to take note. What we're gonna do is push the carriage back and simultaneously we're gonna bend the supporting leg and we're gonna support through the bar here. This is like our hip stretch that we did at the beginning, but we're just taking it to the next level. You can put your other hand wherever you like. I want this leg to have a moment to be in hip extension. So I want you to draw up the belly and feel that you're really working the glutes now. This is the challenging part. We come back in, and when you feel ready, halfway through, 
you're gonna see if you can come back up to balance. Returning the carriage right back in. So this is our proprioception. We're challenging our gait patterns. We push the carriage. We don't need to do many of these. At the same time, I'm bending my supporting leg. I'm gonna support here through my arm. Extend the leg all the way out. We don't wanna sink into the hip, so let's really stay active. Now I start to bring the carriage in, and at the same time, I want you to push through your supporting leg and see if you can balance all the way up. Let's do one more. Press the carriage back. Bring the hand down. Try and be controlled with that. And slowly going back. I'm pushing a little bit through my hand at the same time I'm pushing through my heel. There's a slight bend in this knee. Okay, so you should be working everything here. Really a lot of core support, a lot of balance on that standing leg. Whoo! Bring that carriage in, have a little breather, and we're gonna move to the other side. So this is an opportunity to feel the difference in sides for ourselves. So let's have a little feeling of where we're gonna stand. So when the foot is back, we want the thighs to be fairly level. Okay, so I'm already feeling a little bit shaky from my working leg here. So we're gonna push the carriage away. We're gonna support ourselves through the foot bar, simultaneously bending that supporting knee. See if we can extend the back leg, opening up the hip, keeping the pelvis neutral. Okay, let's challenge our balance as we come back in. Can we stand up and return the arms by your side? Exhale, press the carriage away. I don't mind what breath you take, but just make sure you're breathing. Extend the hip behind you, press into that heel. The supporting leg is bent, and then slowly come in. I do like to take an exhale as I stand up. Feels a little bit more supportive for me. So you might wanna exhale that leg back. Inhale to find your position. And then exhale to push through your supporting leg. This is our last one. Come all the way back up. Amazing job, well done. So we're gonna change to our long box now. So let's put our platform away out of the way. And we're gonna grab our long box. And we're gonna go with a lighter spring for this exercise. Um, you can do it with a heavier spring, but I'm transitioning from one exercise to another. And the second exercise, you're probably gonna feel better with a lighter spring. So I'm gonna go just a half spring, a little blue. So just remember the first exercise might feel a little bit easy, but bear with me as we go into the second part. I'm gonna put my foot bar down. Make sure your box is nicely in the middle and that there's no um, blocking of your straps because we're gonna be lying on our front. Now I just wanna remind you of the exercise we did before with our chest expansion. We're actually gonna be doing that down here. So this is a slight variation of our arms pulling straps. So getting yourself onto your box, hands on the front. And we're gonna put the chest on the box for this one, which is gonna give us a little bit more support through our low back. So have a little moment here. This is really important that we get our position right when we do our prone work. So I want you to feel that your legs are together so that you're connecting your inner thighs. They can be slightly apart if that feels better for you, but there's a parallel feeling down from your hips. This relates more to our walking pattern. And we're gonna feel the pelvis is slightly in a posterior tilt. So what I want you to feel is the front of the pelvis molding itself into your box. And then I wanna take my chest and let it settle so that my upper back feels folded forward. So we're gonna grab onto the straps and we're gonna hold the ropes with the arms starting down. So what we're gonna do is bring the arms up into that bent elbow row position. And I want you to feel the upper arms coming backwards so that the shoulder blades come together. 
So I'm just in a straight line right now here. And then I want you to lengthen yourself out and up very slowly into your thoracic extension. The tongue goes to the roof of the mouth. Mm. And then we're gonna slowly lower back down and allow the spine to flex. So I'm taking my time here. This is a really challenging exercise. So slowly bringing the upper arms up, the shoulder blades retracting. I'm slightly elevated with the shoulders to find this. Extend the spine so the upper back lengthens, the chest goes forward. Check your low back that we're not shortening there. And then slowly come back. The legs are active but not tense. So I want you to lift your navel, expand your chest, bringing the arms up, retracting the shoulders, tongue at the roof of the mouth so that we're really working that thoracic spine. Be mindful the head is not pulling back. And then come back. We're gonna do one more slow one and then we're gonna add on from here. Lengthen through the middle legs, navel up, chest expanding, arms are slightly elevated and retracted. Now, stay in a long line. Let's extend the arms out and see if we can lift just a little fraction more. Return the arms back down, level position. So I want you to inhale here and exhale to extend a little bit more. So this is really challenging on the triceps. If that's too much, stay with the exercise before. Master that before you move on. This is our last one. And return. And beautifully, gracefully lower yourself down. And just bring your straps back up so that we're ready for the next exercise. Let's come off of our box. Slide the foot onto the floor. And we're gonna keep the box like this. We're gonna be sitting up and doing a backhand. I'm gonna keep the exact same springs. And this is in preparation of some really functional sport patterns that we would do maybe in tennis or in squash. So we're gonna just get ourselves nice and lifted here and feel that our sit bones are level in space. My other arm is just gonna be pressed gently against the box. We're gonna take the elbow out into abduction, externally rotate and reach. Now I don't want this to be too super slow because I want this to flow. So we're gonna flow into that backhand and control it back. I want you to feel space between your collarbone and your arm. And don't be afraid to go elevating the shoulder a little bit. In order to get external rotation, we need the shoulder blade to slightly rise. So let's get out of our depression in the shoulders and start to feel a little bit more lift through our trunk. We wanna do about five to eight of these. I'm about six. I'm just gonna do one more here. And return back. Let's do the other side. So you're gonna see the back of my shoulder working, give you some idea how the, the scapula is working in this position. And you probably will notice a difference in sides, so let's feel. So let's get our sit bones nice and level, get our spine nice and neutral, hand on the side. This is just to stabilize. I'm gonna take that elbow out and extend. We wanna avoid pinching the shoulder blades back. Instead, we're gonna widen the shoulder blades out. I'm gonna try and let that flow. And up. Control it down. If you're getting any clunking or cracking, try and really find the fluidity, the space. It might be that you're pinching your shoulder blades instead of allowing them to glide. Five to eight of these. So you might notice that this side is not as strong, maybe not your handed side. I'm gonna do one more. And return all the way back and return back down. I 
Wonderful, so let's come off of our box. We're gonna to transition to some standing postures. So I'm gonna put my box back. And if you have a platform extender, really, really helpful for this. I'm gonna change my springs to a red spring. Um, so that's a, a medium tension. We don't want it too, too heavy, but you do wanna feel the push of the carriage. So you might have to play with the tension. You may be able to put a quarter spring on. Because I'm on a high reformer, I'm gonna be using the gondola pole just for a little bit of balance. If you're on a low reformer, then you should be okay. Always remember when you're standing on the platform and standing up that you always stand on your stable surface first. So I'm gonna use my gondola pole to help me. And I'm gonna stand up on the platform, come to the middle of the carriage, and then we're gonna bring our pole around. So this exercise is really to work kind of a skating action and more of a squat pattern. It's going to really challenge our single-sided stability. So what we're going to start with is a little squat pattern. The gondola pole is very nice for us to just support ourselves going into this little squat. So I want you to feel the weight through your heels, your hips bending back, and your pelvis feeling nice and heavy. And exhale back. Try and keep your carriage still. So we're just getting our legs ready to support ourselves to push the carriage out. So once we feel secure in this little squat, we're gonna be pressing the carriage out, straightening the leg and coming back in. I want you to keep your weight on your platform leg so that we're not shifting our weight over towards the carriage. So this is a little skating movement Feel you're pushing into the outer edges of your foot and opening up through the inner thighs. I want about eight of these. Let's go two more. And one more. And then return back up. Now while we're here in our standing posture, and this is a great one, if you have your gondola pole, you can just have one arm there. And we're just gonna push forward and reach back. We're just gonna to start to feel some rotation in our body. So keeping our neutral posture, reach forward and back. One more, reach forward and back. Change sides, just doing a little spine twist. Thinking of our gait pattern. One pulling back, one pushing forward, one more, reach and back. Okay, we're gonna to transition to the other side. So make sure when you transition, you're standing on your platform, moving around carefully, and bringing your feet into the middle. So now you can see a little bit more from the back of the body. So I'm gonna do my little squat pattern. And I want you to feel that your weight is really even between both legs. Notice if you're leaning to one side. Sitting the pelvis down towards your heels. And let's go one more, finding that position. Let's push the carriage out, straightening that leg. Inhale to come back in. So it's a little abduction. Now notice how my body wants to move to my carriage on this side. So this one's a little bit more challenging for me. So I'm gonna really try and stabilize myself as if I'm pushing against a wall through this side of my leg. <sighs> Breathe, really use the power of your breath. Two more. One more. And then stand back up. Now carefully transition off of your carriage. Using your gondola pole, we're gonna step back carefully onto the floor. Put our gondola pull back. And we're gonna come into our next exercise on the platform, which is a variation of our long stretch. So this is our plank position, and we're gonna be working with our arms to stabilize the shoulders, and then we're gonna work through our core. So we're gonna place our hands onto the platform. So I'm gonna be using my platform extender. If you don't have a platform extender, you can use the bar as in the traditional repertoire. But I really like the hands to be nice and flat, like I'm weight bearing on the floor. Let's take a moment to just move our shoulder blades apart and together. 
and to feel the shoulder blades arrive between the spine, on either side of the spine. I want you to feel that the center of your hand is lifted, so we're not pressing into the center of the hand. And then we're gonna move the carriage out like our knee stretches. We're still on a single spring, so this is challenging for core. So I arrive in a plank. I'm in a neutral position with the spine in hip extension. Now we're gonna push the platform forward to flex the shoulders and then pull yourself back. We're gonna keep that neutral position plank. I'm pressing slightly through my feet. I'm engaged through the inner thighs. We don't need to do many of these. Scooping the arms underneath one more time. Keep the belly retracted up and back in. And then pull the carriage in. Have a little breather for your wrists. Now, this is one of my favorite planks that actually gets our deep core muscles really working. We're actually gonna come down onto our forearms here and we're gonna move the legs back so that we're in a kneeling position with the feet up. Now, depending on the size of the carriage, you wanna feel like you start in hip flexion and then you can push the carriage away into hip extension. You may need a sticky mat underneath your knees if you're sliding. So I wanna get my shoulders nice and stable, my belly retracted, my spine lengthened. Think about your long box series, that thoracic extension we did. We've done our knee stretches for our hips and our elephant. We've done lots of core. So this is the finale. Let's go two more. Going into that plank. My shoulders are really working here. Last one. And come back in. And just move yourself into a nice little shell stretch, an active shell. Moving your pelvis away from your arms. We're just gonna come to standing. And just finish with a little cool down. So standing with your feet nicely underneath you, just get the feeling of space going all the way up your body, from your ankles, through your knees. Feel like you've got a piece of paper that can slide between your kneecap and your knee joint. Feel space in your hip, all the way up your spine, and feel like your shoulders are wide and hanging on your back. We're gonna take the arms up. And then we're gonna reach one arm up and one arm down. Almost like a little mermaid stretch, but it's more of a decompression exercise. So really reaching to the sky and the other arm coming down. One more. And release. Good, then we're just gonna do a little hinge at the hips, a little bow forward. And back up to that nice standing posture. Bending into the hips. This is a really important pattern for us, bending over and picking up things off the floor that we don't round the back. And then from this position, we're gonna slide down the hands. We're gonna send the pelvis weight back, drop the tummy and the ribs. Feel that little hamstring stretch. And then if you feel you can, sliding your hands down towards your feet, allowing the head to drop and making your way all the way back up. Feeling the space in all your joints as you stand. Taking one leg back with the front leg bent, tilt your pelvis up and reach the arms up into a nice little hip stretch. And release down and reach your heel back so you can feel the calf stretch. Changing sides, just finishing off our workout Tilt the pelvis, congratulate yourself on what you've achieved today. Feel that every time you do this workout, you're gonna get stronger and stronger and progress yourself into better function. Thank you for joining me today. For those of you who wanna know what I've been working on today, this is an Align Pilates Reformer A8 style. And I've been working with the long box, the platform extender, 
and the gondola pole as extra parts to this reformer.